Hello, this is Yuriko back with the part two of episode four where we have to go talk to Edna. Oh yes, it's going to be such a lovely explanation of how and why she's doing all this crap to him now. Alright, well let's see what the hell this chick's got to say. I really don't want to talk to her. Spell it! B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Crockett! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? <sighs> I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh, Have you seen Emmett? Yeah, just now, in the town square. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well then. Uh... I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but... He's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Good lord. Well? I talked to her. And? She says she knows what she's looking for, and it's you. But it can't be me. It wasn't me. Marty, we don't belong together. You don't have to tell me that. Find out exactly what her requirements are. I can almost guarantee you that I don't fit them. <sighs> what does she have to say? Edna? Oh, I, I haven't talked to her yet. Well, what are you waiting for? We need to get those kids separated. <clears throat> you said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett. You know that? Well, his physical appearance for one thing. And it may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. 
And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? That's no. all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. Where did she go? Oh, there she is. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Oh. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Uh, uh... At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow, and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. <laughs> Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? <laughs> Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Aww. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Oh, okay. see you, Trixie. From this chamber of wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. Wow. Wow. This, this, wow. No, no, wait, wait. Okay. Ah, good. You're back. Give me the full report. She says she likes you because you've got a virtuous mind, you look good in a suit, and you're completely faithful to her. Damn, she's got me dead to rights. Well, you'll just have to find a way to change her mind. I'll be here if you need any help. Do you need any help? So, what do we do about Edna? Only one thing we can do. Lie. Make me out to be a less desirable catch than I really am. Why would she believe me? She said she knows you inside and out. Then you'll have to resort to skullduggery. You've done it before. You ought to be getting good at it by now. Oh. Yeah, I guess I am. <sighs> I think I'm starting to get a plan. Good. Tell me. No, no! After all, it's my history we're talking about. If I learn how you're planning on altering it, my resolve may weaken. I suggested a little scheme to Trixie, but I don't know if she's going to go along with it. Pursue whatever strategies you like, but please don't tell me the details. Oh, God, I don't know what to do.
Hey, Artie. Officer. Officer? Oh, right. Don't blow your cover. Will you please keep your mind on the task at hand? <sighs> Can't talk right now. To all who approach these hallowed halls. What's cooking? Ideas. What's cooking? Up here. Look, my friend Emmett really needs help. The one who's going out with Edna Strickland? You're darn right he needs help. I'm not asking you to actually seduce him. Just make her think that you two have a thing going. It'll drive her crazy. <laughs> I guess it would. So... Uh-uh. I wouldn't do that to another girl unless I was good and mad at her. And besides, it might tarnish my image as a muse. See ya, Trixie. Don't be a stranger. Wait a minute. I have some ideas. Let's go talk to Edna. Ahem. <clears throat> Back again, Mr. Crockett? What can I help you with? I was thinking. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume, she's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, well. These people are impossible. Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's oh, how they shit. operate. Is it? Still. I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... his invention. Uh-huh. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. How about you? Have you got any questions for me? Uh, no. Then kindly let me pass. I am afraid I can't. Until I've located your registration form. Oh, this is absurd! Well then. I know there's cue balls over here. Mm, I'll go talk to him. Hey. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez. This guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Because Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. Why are your teeth green? You seem kind of angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh, yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just, well, it just cheeses me off, you know? Why is his teeth green? So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on. No. Tell you uh, what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Ooh! All right, Junior, you win. That was <laughs> pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that... Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. 
She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Well, okay. Yeah, what's hey, with your what's teeth? what's with your teeth? My teeth? Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Get loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Let me see. The funny thing of it is, uh, there's an alcohol absinthe that if you drink enough of it, uh, it does turn your teeth green. You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? Oh, sir, Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill I Valley... I don't need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once the winsome wench of Winnipeg. Her past doesn't matter to... Trixie? What is it, Audie? You uh -oh. know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even an American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the Expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen, so if you're really a Canadian... I'm being fired? You're firing me? I don't want to. Here. Yeah. Take it back. Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Aww. Let's talk. Yeah. yeah. Okay, where'd she go? Is she still over here? Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue-nosed bitty eat her heart out. That's great. Ooh. I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows but up... we got to do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. But I was in this play once. The parlor maid's predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only, I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. Fuck yeah! Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> no, we don't want to talk to Arthur. God damn it. Okay. I want to talk to that dude. I haven't talked to him yet. Hey, excuse me. Yeah? When does the expo Not open? Not tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds. You got official business here? Yeah. Well, stay out of the way of the workers. Well, then. You look familiar. Do I know you? Uh, nope. Okay, apparently not. What? Boy, this game's kind of screwy. I'm so sorry about the mechanics and all this. <laughs> Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. 
Tell you what, I'll take it on a test drive one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. It worked, didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the part for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. My future wouldn't uh -huh. be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Crockett. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you've shaved off your hair, but... Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interest. You see, I know what you're up to. Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. <laughs> go. I'll keep her occupied till you get back. Awesome. <laughs> Hang on, Emmett. Hope you're ready for a big breakup. Emmett? Thanks again for your assistance, Detective Parker. Detective? Wow. What the hell is Kid doing here? Nothing criminal, I assure you. I was just getting a mind map of Mr. Tannen for our exhibition at the Expo. The authorities wouldn't allow Edna and I to stage a demonstration of the mental alignment meter with a violent felon, but this little baby is just as good. Okay, let's see now, what's next? Check the stew, sort the maps. Ooh, I almost forgot that. Edna really is cracking the whip, isn't she? Well, yes, but she's got my best interests at heart. Without her, I can get so distracted. Did she send you down here to check up on me? Uh, yeah, she wanted to come herself, but... She's busy too, I know. Well, you're a poor substitute for Edna's lovely features, but make yourself at home. Thanks. No thanks are necessary. Without you, I'd never be where I am now. In love with a woman of my dreams. And a mere six hours from my first public triumph as a scientist. Wait a minute. Six hours? Jumping Jehoshaphat, I'm running out of time! Good grief. How does the mental alignment thing work? Here, I'll show you. Hey! The test subject wears this mind mapping helmet, which probes the brain by measuring fluctuations in skin conductance and electrical resistance on the surface of the parietal lobe. Uh-huh. 
When I turn on the mind mapping helmet with this radio switch, the subject is exposed to a series of visual stimuli intended to provoke a series of positive or negative responses as indicated by these lights on the helmet. Hey, is that... As the responses are recorded, they're relayed to this special typewriter, which prints out a punch card that represents the subject's mind map. All I see is a bunch of holes. Well, to you, maybe. But to our mental alignment meter, this mind map is nothing less than a peek into your subconscious. Observe as I place your mind map into the MAM. Layabout? <laughs> is that machine calling me a slacker? No, your own physiological responses did. Liar! God, there's so much shit in here. Careful. Don't let all the flavor escape. Hey, Emmett, I think your mind map test is broken. Oh, well, that switch just keeps shoring out on me. No time to fix it now. I'll have to take care of it at the expo. 
Looks like I'm not going to be doing any more mind maps. I guess I'll test this out and hope for the best. Okay, if you haven't noticed there, I, I am using walkthrough. <laughs> I know, I'm cheating. I'm sorry. But we're going to have to wait for the mental alignment meter test on a later date. <laughs> so remember to like, share, and subscribe and all that happy horse bucky. Remember to make this channel bigger if you don't mind because I love doing this for you guys. This is actually quite fun and very relaxing, believe it or not. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.